Alright, so I'm gonna go over a little bit on what you want to do with Rapid on Mega Mart. I'm gonna keep it relatively standard and not do anything like super crazy, so it's easy for people to understand. So first, Rapid wants to position left stack the majority of the time, and it's gonna play on left stack based on the other comp. If they're being aggressive on the left stack, you want to just back up and hold the position since it's really valuable. If they're not, you want to pressure right stack in mid and limit their movement options. In this case, they're not being very aggressive, so I can have complete control over middle and keep the charger from positioning super easily. On top of that, Torp Spam is going to move people from left and ultimately move them right, which is easier for Blast to play in it. I'm going to be aggro on top right since they're all coming from spawn. There's a considerable amount of distance they have to go if they want to get over here. They know I'm here and they're going around, and my team is not spending this, so I'm going to play on the right stack. Again, make sure you play your distance, don't go for anything you don't have to. If you're playing far left, you can push after you get damage. Ultimate, ultimately, with Rapid overall, you want to get some form of damage before you follow up on people, and then follow up based on where you think they will move. Bambi's probably running, but I didn't get the follow up in time. I'm weak, so I'm going to back off. I can Torp Spam right side or position left side based on where they're positioning. Left side is a bit easier since you can play under a ledge. That one's gonna rush me, I didn't back up properly. Got stuck on the balloon because I didn't space. Probably gonna lose zone here. 2v2, they can still have paint. Should be able to hold here, just gonna tap zone, ignore the guy on the left. There we go. So to go over a little bit, left and right stack are really important. Left stack, you can always just defend it. It's okay to not die and not pressure too much because holding that position is valuable. Right stack is really good for torpedo spamming. You can push up if there are people cleared because there's distance. Left side, you can play under the drop. Be sure to back up when people pressure you. All right, that was short. Let's do another. I don't mind playing right now. I've gotten more in the mood than out of it, and I'm starting to hit shots, so... Hey, I'll play more. Why not? TC was still technically progress tonight. Even if it wasn't back to where it was before the DC, I did gain points considerably, so... Ultimately, still kind of worth it. If we're against Mickey, since he's a pretty good charger, I'm going to go over basically a bit of how to play versus good chargers. Alright, now we have port, so I'm going to go over how to play port. The port is more simple. There's not really anything super advanced for rapid positioning. Generally, you want to play right lane because chargers don't go there. They mostly go left or mid. They can play right lane, but most chargers will play the opposite side, so it gives you a bit of an advantage. You want to avoid range and wall out a lane. The other thing you can do is play on this block, but I'm not going to show that off right now. That's a bit more complicated. Watch the right block for people climbing up. Be aware of mid. Check your map. If they're backed up, you can pressure middle. But keep your lane under control. I have two shots on this rapid, so I move forward. It was a bit weird moving in. I didn't expect it. That's on me. Sometimes you're going to predict movement wrong, and you're going to get killed because of it. In that case, I expected the rapid to run away because he took two shots of damage, but I waited too long, so he got confident to approach. If I went faster, I would have gotten the kill. You peeking there has slightly more range than me, so I'm not going to go for it. He was in really insane matchup, so I don't want to play it. I don't really need to anyway. Torp for the kill, want to get zone. I want to get in their court because that's where I can play a lot more of my spacing. I have the better matchup with the Rapid too because I have mines and ball. I mean, I have Torp and baller and his mines. He's kind of screwed. He got away, card is dead. Jump in, both left side. My bad, not being aware of the rapid. The rapid's doing weirder positioning, not necessarily bad, just different than I expect, and I need to be aware of it because I'm getting caught off guard. So I'll be kind of zone. There's probably gonna be a push on the left side. At this point, since I'm against a good charger, I want to know what lane they're patrolling and try to pay attention to it. Generally, you can tell this by the paint on the map or what lanes they're patrolling. Charger is pretty visible. You can notice it pretty easily. Also, when they're close to Ray on this map, they're probably going to back up in Ray, so you don't have to worry about it as much. Just make sure you have enough turf around you to dodge Ray. You can also take some slight high ground if you're near the sponge, for example. All good places to go, specifically against Ray. Crush up 
stream, whatever, one, figured someone else was on him, but no one was, he's way too far away for it to matter right now, so we're quite objective, Grab is dead, Ace is dead, Carter's still peeking, so I'm gonna be careful, he's focused on the left side right now, I can play along the little slight elevation to make it difficult, he has wall, don't challenge it, you take like four shots straight wall, most of the time you're gonna have to leave a charger there. They're actually not using Ray Charger, they're using Fire Pin, so it's important to know. Charger can peek really easily here. You want to Torp Spam on this map because it's really, really useful. Play in your corner so he can't get you. Poke out when he shoots. Pay attention to where he's at, when he's actually shooting his weapon. That's the time you have to peek if you shoot. A tree on the left, two here. You can push up. Both these weapons aren't going to be good at fighting me. Charger around wall. Then I play to shoot the outside because A tree's here too. Pick. A tree can die too. Rapid can die too. Fucked up the aim, whatever, doesn't matter. At that point, it didn't really matter how well I aimed, they couldn't win the game. Port, overall notes, be aware of what lane's charger is on. When it's patrolling it, you can't put a lot of pressure. If you're going to poke charger, look for when they actually use their shot. You can also force shot by throwing torpedoes safely behind a wall. Ultimately, with charger, you need to know when they're shooting and where they are. Pay attention to how visible Charger can be, it will help you be aware of it. If they fuck around with their wall and try to play you in CQC, don't fucking do it. Unless if you have to and you have Torpedo at the ready, it's not worth it. You will lose because you take forever to break wall. Good Chargers will hit the shot. Ultimately, no, really, no lane is super insane for Rapid in the first place. There's not really any super good positioning on port, so you can be more flexible about where you go. Just make sure you keep pressure on the lane you're at and watch the lane near you. Typically, playing the left or right lane is better because you don't have to watch both sides and it'll leave you less susceptible to flanks. Also be careful of other players' weird movement habits. If they have something weird, adapt to it and get used to it. I'm not going to go over anything that's super specific based on my comps. I'm more just going to talk about what you should be focusing on. Obviously, some comps are going to allow you to do your thing better than others, but in this case, I'm just focused on what I'm trying to do. Thinking about what your comp will let you do and how you can play because of it is a little more advanced, and right now I'm just focused on what you should be focused on as a rapid regardless. Playing left lane this time because they don't really have any back to to do, which means there's probably not going to be much pressure on them. Two of them are in zone here, both with armor, you probably get a pick. I meant to sub cancel, kind of fucked it. Charger on top right there means I can't really approach or pressure him easily, gonna play left lane. They went in zone, the splash down, that means they don't have many defense options left. Rapid committed bomber, probably die. You got a good pick. He's got MPU. Important to note for me. Don't really worry about it though. Want to try to go right lane and get court before they take it because it's really hard to get back to court when they lock you out of them. One of the problems with the map. Court, you need to be careful in taking your court back and make sure you don't beat. It's really easy to lock people out of court, so just take it slow as get court, then it goes up. Too weak, just applying sick damage, not looking for kills in particular, just want people weak. Fucked up there, should have bothered sooner. We're one dead, we're gonna have to be careful, zone's contested, and we have time. There's a jump on the right, I'm gonna attempt to camp it. Moved a little weirdly, whatever. Still was able to get the kill, they're too dead, their only thing they have is bomb rush, is a bit of sustain, once it runs out, they're dead. Gonna directly challenge the rapid this time. My ball was too late again. When you're pushing up and you have ball, you need to be careful on what can be there and what you can react to. I'm doing a particularly poor job of being aware of where they're looking for my flanks and expecting them to be less aware of the sides. I should be bothering him sooner and using it to get in and get a good position so I can play to my range. Not popping it as a last resort against a comp like this. That's on me. I can drop here because there's no one in the court that is, like, able to punish me. Rapid's gonna win the fight. I thought I could ball in time, but the arrow spray was in a sharp spot. More just a bit lucky there. Sorrel has 
baller and we have a pick, so it's possible to get the zone, but we more or less have to rush it. I'm gonna try to paint him with the ball quickly, because we can get a quick cap if he paints him. He backed up, but I'll get my own ball, so it's still possible to get it. We got bomb rush first, so that's just gonna win the fight. Might be able to cap? Not happening. All right, what went wrong there? My aggression was everything that went wrong with that game. Every time we got a pick to go in zone, I fed because I didn't use baller properly. Should have been using it more preemptively to start something to go in rather than using it as a panic button. On top of that, I put myself in really bad situations in the first place. So it's me playing the map poorly. That isn't on my team. My team did not do well either, but that does not mean it is their fault. In that case, I made a repeated mistake that got punished. A lack of adaption can cost games. That being said, don't be harsh. Clean it up next game. solo. I'm more susceptible to make mistakes in solo because I don't think about what the players are capable because it's hard to know. So sometimes I will go for things purely on the idea that they are probably players who are going to be less aware of these things. That being said, it's not always true. You can get exploited for being too ignorant of how good players can actually be. And that's what happened. Absolutely something that costs games. This happens in tournaments as well. Games will underestimate people who are possibly good for games. That was one, he barely lived that. Ball should kill him if it doesn't corp follow up will force him to move really far away. Still to the right play by living. I want to move out because this isn't a ton of things to push. This guy's miss is coming off, but I'm still gonna move back. I'm lowing with no turn and people are dying. Direct is good for KB. This guy's just holding forward. My aim should have been better. Too predictable and I didn't kill him. Still better than I at least traded since it's an armor option. We're 2v2 and we have slight core control. I'm gonna try to be fast in the court to hold it since they don't have anything alive with a super fast kill zone. I wanna pressure the goose safely here since it's behind a wall. Two on the right here. Zap is here and there's one behind us on the right side. We're gonna kill the beacon, but Switch has been too far at this point. I know the zap now just holds forward on me, so I'm gonna be careful and space it. Actually, not this time. Can't really go zone because too many people are dead. Rapid can't paint, so it kind of needs its team alive to be able to do things. Zap fed, not my fault. Get a ball in the rapid. Rapid can probably die, he's gonna run left. One, we need to go zone, there's no time. That game, not my fault. Team fed, that's on them. There was nothing I could do there. Don't beat myself up on it. Move on. If you lose a game because your team makes really poor mistakes and you recognize that that's just that, then that's not something that you can be tilted over or upset over. You are going to lose games because your teammates will be shit. That will happen. Like, it's an inevitability. Sometimes you will lose games because your team will be shit. And they will feed, or whatever. That happens. In this case, I didn't have many mistakes. I died one time, I stayed alive, I played court pretty well. The only mistake I made was slight aim being bad on the zap, which was a minor mistake. Not a game costing one. Feeding means there's going to be a lack of specials, which means pushing is hard, which can lead to staggering, which leads to playing a lot of 2v4s, which leads to a loss very fast. All right, we're back on Mako, so positioning is going to be much more important here because this is a map of actual good rapid positions. Pretty much always going to start left stack here. 
This team, on the other hand, actually has an aggressor on the left stack, so I'm going to pressure that first. If they always have a flanker or someone who goes around the left side, pay attention to that and kill it. Shut it down or wall the mountain, they won't get the good position. They also have people playing left side again, so I'm going to play on the left this time. There's a really good spot because you can stay out of treasure range, you have a lot of cover, you can back up easily, and you can pressure with torques. There's just a standard rapid ledge that you can beat. We're too dead, I'm going to hold this because they're going to waste specials on me. Machine drop, I don't have ink, just going to use ball. Fine use of ball to kill me. We got away, but the rapid drops, so I can probably kill rapid if I don't fuck up my hand. There we go. I have no ink, so I need to be careful with machine. Got the trade, that's fine. Ultimately, should have been more smart with ball. Machine should have gone behind me. But outside of that, that was still handleable. They wasted hammer. They have, like, no specials. There's going to be one trying to rush the zone because they have short range weapons. Hurling rush is really dangerous to cap it. I just want to paint over it slightly. Even if rapid doesn't contribute paint much, the blast radius is pretty large. So sometimes you can ink a critical area of zone to stall it out. Especially over bomber if they're bomber a single area. So if the paint is heavily focused on one point of zones, you can still focus that as a rapid and put rapid shots over it. Sometimes rapid can actually help with zone paint. This is because, again, the actual blasts themselves are good at painting. They're consistent, fast, and paint a good area. It's specific, but it can happen. Sorry for Mr. Tran, can't do anything about it. It is what it is. Okay, port again. Jet can have range me and patrol lane, so I have to be careful for it. I'm generally going to avoid it. Mini has mobility, which can be tricky. Crap it is simply a ditto matchup, in which we have similar gear abilities in the first place. Let's take a better position. Still got the trick. Oh, it's fuzzy. Nice. Squeezer is a matchup I can bully, just have to be careful for bubbles. See dead, I want to push up here. Hammer can die. Good shit for the heavy. Jet isn't being aware, I can push him safely. Still a slow kill time. Ball for a kill here. Captain will probably get away. Didn't. Three dead. Squeeze or waste your bubbles. If I got away in time, I can get away. Still, it's good. Even with that double kill, I would argue that the double kill isn't worth it. Yes, you got two kills, but your entire team was dead. There's no capitalization. You just lost bubble charge, and the two people you killed are now back. That was not worth it. If it was two kills without using the special, you could argue special depletion, but he used bubbles, which is one of the best specials right now, in order to get a double that didn't do anything. Baller is one shot. You can generally punish other ballers pretty well by rolling torp and shooting it. If you get lucky enough to direct, that'll be a kill, and if not, there'll be one shot with paint around Squeeze is the only one alive. He's going from right again. I'm just going to pressure it. They have to drop mid. At this point, they can't reach zone in time. The game is over. You know the splash? Interesting. Thank you. Cool. 
You lost 25? Unfortunate. Sorry about that. What player were you? Oh, you're in a different solo, I see. Unfortunate. Probably going to be against another Crapid, so I could talk about Crapid Ditto a bit, in case you're against another one. It's not common, but it could be worth it. So I can go over that. Crapid Ditto is actually really simple. For the vast majority of situations, whoever gets the first shot is going to win. If it's CQC, whoever has the better accuracy is going to win. Or, we're, rather, for the most part, if it's CPC, whoever has more paint is going to win. If you have better accuracy, it's bonus. I don't like that rapid spot on the top right. While the block seems good, it's really susceptible to charge. So, it's not really the best decision to actually take. Shot at some speed, you could be more aware of that. Minor note, still. Or, since it's a space heavy weapon. Spacing heavy weapon, whatever. Go on the right, the rapid is not alone. He's maybe there for a shot. <laughs> We're getting picked off a bit. I'm gonna start pressuring from top and try to get picked that way. I'm gonna use a world torp if I can find where someone is to get a quick dump two damage hits, which can lead to a kill. I have to be careful for the other rapids poking, since he's probably in a better spot to where he can safely poke me. We have a pick, so that's something. Rapid is ball, but he has a team with him. Gave him the hit so he would move in. Torp, Spark, Baller is a combo that can kill. You can't react Baller in time to that because it's too fast. Unfortunately, he misses Spark, but that might stall the zone long enough. Unfortunately, the team's coming back slower. At this point, we pretty much have one fight to win, and we need to go in quickly. So there's really not much time to waste. I'm gonna go left lane because his 96 has to go straight to zone, which means he's killed. There's a rapid and a shot, so I'm kinda screwed, but we got zone cap, so I don't really care. We got what we came for. Now we're in defense again, and this time we actually have to do it properly, meaning we do not feed and get kills and go in. Shot underneath is a bad spot. I unfortunately missed that kill. It's low, there's a rapid behind. Fucked up my aim, got picked up. Good spot from the rapid. I didn't expect that aggressive move in position, but no one was aware of it, so it completely works. That being said, I'm not going to push this side because we don't have any time. I can maybe farm a ball. At this point, I just have to go left and pray no one sees me. People see me, I have ball. Have to kill shot. Got zone. Didn't have aim for the splashdown kill, so got it afterward. I'm one shot to the rapid, so I'm probably dead. I wasn't sure if he was behind or ahead, so I didn't dodge it properly. Still got zone, clutched out a really important fight. Now we have turf in our back that we can paint to get specials to solid zone, which is really important if our splash capitalizes on. Leader could also do so, but then we lose charge of pressure. Rapid's dead, he was weak to someone, so an easy torp combo will be a kill here. Again, whoever takes damage first is going to lose. Shot got me, didn't expect him to be there. My bad on positioning, we can still hold this because my team's doing good. Our leader should give a safe jump, but our squeezer is a better one and he's giving a jump purposely. It's a bit of an indication. We're gonna space backward here against 96. They got zone, but I'm not too worried about that. We want to lock out in court anyway, so we didn't exactly have a good hold in the first place. If we get kills, we get to push up further. In port, getting court is what matters, not just holding zone. Wasn't able to lock on exactly what he was missing, and his missile behind me, which is really not good. I can get ball and baby cam a jump. Neither of which happened. 96 somehow didn't die, didn't expect it, but I know where he's hiding, so he's dead. Can't get away from that. Leader's watching me, but I should be able to just pop up. I'm in a pretty bad spot now. I'm gonna get ambushed when I come to spawn, so I'm gonna be aggressive to try to go back. Fucked up on the shot. Change my title? Why? Jump again. 
game is still winnable, it's been tricky because we haven't been able to get court, and that's really important on this map. We have two kills, this is possible. Don't want to feed, I have a bubble blocking the front so I can safely tank without wasting my bullet. That being said, I'm still pretty alone right now. Took a bet on the E leader not noticing me, but they have friends helping them. I'm actually gonna play high ground here. Trade is not what I was hoping for, but it's better than nothing. We theoretically have man advantage in a suction rush, so we should be able to stall. One of us died, so I want us to be careful of flank. I would jump in, but it's really not safe, and if I die on zone, we lose. Our splash needs to focus on zone. I'm gonna come from spawn to help them as fast as I can. They're gonna have paint with missiles. Fortunately, we lost. Not too much there. That could have gone better for me. I played that all right. I could have died a little less, but ultimately I had to do risky plays to get zone in the first place, especially when we were locked out, and a lot of the deaths came from just going for zone, which was something I had to do. Our splash died way too much, which is more important in that case. Staying alive to splash is really important, since you get bombers and not paint anything. So yeah, I did have 9 deaths that game, and that's unusual for Rapid, but again, most of them were for a necessary zone cap. So not really I can be terribly upset about. We didn't stay alive in the right situations, and I was alive in those specific situations, where if I did die, I got 2 kills before I did. Left stack, same as usual, be aware of the sides. I have to be careful because they have charger peeking, so play behind the wall or under the ramp here. They're not going to aggress this side super hard. This guy's going to get a predictable way, which is even worse. So we can just kill him. This map has a lot more corners and shit, so it's going to be much easier to space the rapid. That's why Fork is weaker, but still fine for us. Much more places you can be this matchup because of it. I'm going to be aggressive here because they have two chargers, and that will struggle being on campus. Rail so that they can't get in faster. Leader's not being aware, so it's a free kill. Shot some feet a bit, that sucks. Still kill. What's your favorite map in the map? My favorite weapon is Crapid, and um, I'd say Ink Plus probably my favorite map. Here jumps the blob. Leader died, great. They have bubbles here. You don't want to feed them. You wasted them without getting any actual ground. I can afford to chase this, he can't one shot me. Part of why Rapid can do good against Penguin. Leader's dead. K shot's gonna rush me. That's fine with me. Charger got a good shot on me. If I backed up a little sooner, I would have lived, but it doesn't really matter at this point as long as we play this correctly and we have Blob with probably having rain rated, so we're probably pretty much good. There you go. Go for to be aggressive there because Mako gives a lot of angles and they had a bad comp. If you're being aggressive, you still want to play at your range and at angles, but just pressure people in bad spots. If they're unaware, use Torpedo when you engage, unless if you really have zero other option. Torpedo will make your kills way fucking faster and make it so people can't react. It's how you get ambush kills as a rapid and no other rapid can do it as well. Torpedo is what will give you these kills and it also means you don't need a direct, since sometimes you can just use rapid plus shots. If you're going to engage from any kind of flank or shark, which will happen at times, use Torp with it. Roll or throw will depend on the situation. If you can roll it, 9 times out of 10, it's going to be better to roll it. If there's somewhere where you can't roll it, then throw it. It'll still be better than not using it at all. This is a super high power lobby. So this is going to be really tricky. Probably going to be a few top 100s. One. Cool. We have an NA player. Our comp is a little weird. Still plenty winnable. Double Brawl is interesting. The machines had a really difficult playing spot. That's one weapon where it's difficult to actually hold this. Brawl I can deal with really well. Remove armor, break shield. 
all of it. Brawl is a really good matchup for you, so use it whenever possible. Mini has a lot of mobility, you gotta be careful with it. Still something you can wall with indirects, but think of it like a dually, where getting directs on it is tricky because of mobility. So you need to read it to get indirects, but indirects you can use the pressure better than other weapons can because you don't need to read exactly where it goes to do damage. Machine's got kind of back off here. I wanna get zone. Machine's underneath still, but he can't really do much about all the forward. Splash down will just kill him, so he's not gonna use it. Especially against a rapid when he's weak, will literally kill his pressure pretty much every time. Unless the angle is really awkward. They're gonna have a lot of fizzy spam in his zone that can contest it really easily, so I'm gonna use some roll torque to help hold it, even though I can't paint too well. Ultimately, it would be a teammate's job if you're playing with the team environments, paint over fizzy spam if they're using it. But unfortunately, I don't have that situation. Direct didn't kill him, but he was weak enough. I actually shouldn't have killed that bomber sheezer. I should have staggered him, and I'll give an example right after on how staggering a bomber sheezer works. But again, that's another really advanced thing, but it's something I should have done. Because that bomber should have done nothing, and he would have died and lost the entire swing. You can't trip out while you're bomber shooting. Actually successfully baited the splashdown was cool. This machine can't push me. Teammates lost 3v3 in zone. Not my fault. Mini can die. Hopefully he does. Fortunately, he didn't. Well, I got good picks. They're gonna catch them. Or the shoes soon? Oh, I forgot. Yeah. Oh, I'll do it right after this game. But then we're gonna go back to muscle. They're pushing on top right really heavily. I want to use Torps from this crossfire angle because it pressures the Brella especially. The machine's probably gonna look to push me since it's overall a good matchup for machine. Probably gonna get killed by the Brella if I don't run. I'm gonna fix it up here just to throw him off. Push him off. Cool. Brella versus Rapid is still really awkward in CTC. You have swim speed for a lot of high mobility and a lot of shield pressure. Plus, Sparks can hit it if they're weak. So it's still really important. If you can't kill a Splashdown, then try to shoot it when it lands. You'll get guaranteed damage. Even if it's not direct. You will damage them and pain over. Probably dead of the Brella because the 10 shielded behind me. Did you make him fully with so special, then kill him, referring back to the Sagar Bombers? Yes. That is what you should do. Kill him so they still take time, but if you use the entire special, you'll lose all your points. And you can't jump out when you're in a bomber. It's one of the few things you can actually stagger people with, and it's pretty worth it. It's honestly super important in counterplaying Brella, because Brella is, right now will use special charge up and get super fast bomber shoots, and it paints really well and doesn't take fights. Brella likes playing 1v1, so Brella doesn't have to leave zone. Ultimately takes 1v1s. If you don't kill it, it's going to get bombers to win any special fight. So being able to get rid of a Brella bomber is super important right now. More than it ever has been. In a ball because they're wasting armor and they're in a bad spot. At this point, I can put a fuck ton of pressure. You're gonna help our Brella? You lost it? Best way I can space here is actually running away. Even if it's behind me. Now, I could jump back or I could stay here. It's gonna depend on if I'm drawing attention and who it's from. In this case, it's from the machine, which is not good. But my team is winning, so I'm gonna keep the machine over here anyway. Still wanted to play highly staying alive and try to draw at least two people's attention if you do end up behind in a situation that works. It's rare, but it can happen. Minis one, I fucked up and took damage, get a ball so I don't die. This team here is really poor. Machine can be pressured off, which is really good because he's basically forcing himself to die. I fucked up, that's on me. Machine's on the right, he could probably die because we have man advantage and a lot of people on him. I'm good at swimming because rail doesn't take very long, especially with swim speed. We're one dead, we'll get points on this. Mostly just gonna paint zone. Rail is dead, that's great. Mini's low, and remove the armor. I'm gonna play this fight, even if it's not too often. Because I think we can win it. Looks like we're actually gonna lose it. We got two picks though, so it's not like a completely lost fight, even if they die. It's still going to be really bad in terms of actual time remaining. We don't have too much. There are probably going to be people who want to flank. We have very little time. We need to do quick paint on zone. I'm going to get him zone so it's torque paint zone with both his uh, initial shot and the other one. They capped it. We should be good. We just need to paint right now. Our tent actually choked here. Okay, tent fucked up heavily and that's how we lost the game. Not again on me there. Brella got a kill. I couldn't avoid it. If our tent threw hammer and focused on painting and shield launch, we would have held the zone. That's on him. No idea why he was using hammer in a paint battle.
absolutely no sense made whatsoever. Good morning. All right, I'll order the shirt. Uh, my friend code, I'll just DM you. You can just hop in, we'll do it real quick. But yeah, I can give an example of a stagger because it happened in a scrim, so I can show it off. Here, Brella commits Bombers. He's really separated, and at this point is a pretty easy kill for me or Tetsu with our weapons. But instead, I call out here not to kill him yet. So all three of us wait. We let the entire Bombers go out, we just paint over him. As soon as the Bombers ends, we collapse on him and kill him. That's how you stagger a bomber. It can take longer, but the benefit is that the Brella will lose 100% of the special and then have the death timer. And since Brella is a low points for special weapon that can paint really well, being able to lose a whole bomber is actually really valuable. It's situational, but if the situation happens where the bomber isn't going to do much and the Brella is in a spot where they can die after, it's better to wait it out and let them use the entire bomber in most situations. Staggering isn't really a thing in this game, and the reason is because you can jump out. However, in a bomb rush, you cannot jump out. So if you fuck up and get in a bad position, you actually can't do anything about it. Again, it's one of the few things you can actually stagger. Another example of this would be hammer. Hammer is another thing you can stagger. However, it's a lot harder to stagger a hammer, admittedly. Staggering a bomb rush is pretty easy, because you can just stay out of the way. Can I play Splatfest with you? Uh, I might do Splatfest with viewers. I'm not sure. It's honestly something I could be doing. I've been thinking about Brella counterplay a lot and staggering is just something I wanted to do more. Just because Brella basically has two things going for it and those two things correlate with each other perfectly. Like it paints and bomber spams, but it has a hard time approaching. So the things play into each other well because it can get bombers really fast, which means it doesn't need to approach or take 1v1s that often or push into teams because they're going to get bombers faster than other people. And then because of that, you want to deal with the bomber spam. And if you deal with the bomber spam, it means you have to go challenge Umbrella. And Umbrellas will love if you have to go and challenge them. So the two things play perfectly into each other and create hell. CDS is a very similar thing, except instead of bullying people, it just doesn't fucking die. And it has better pain at a distance. The difference is a slightly lower cost of special. And less match reviews. But I think CDS is better than Brella at the moment. In terms of that role, since they have a very similar thing that they can do. Oh, I forgot to equip the shoes. Nice. Good one for me. We'll do another one. My bad. Absolutely not thinking about the gear. Might be. I think you wanted to order this from the QR set, so I'll just... There we go. Used all the brain cells on this Brella talk. I mean, yeah, Brella's not that complicated. The one thing I think I want to see is I want to see Brella players using charge up over run speed. I think most Brella players need to be adapting to using a special charge and that it's better. Run speed actually does very, very little. It's very minor in actually helping strafing both with shielding and with shooting. It's more of a mix-up if you stop shooting for a little bit, which isn't as good compared to Bomb Rush, which if you run Special Charge Up, you can get pretty much a 150p, 5p Bomb Rush with about a pure charge. Basically, Charge Up's going to be way more useful. Other modes, this does not apply. This is purely a zones thing. Maybe Rainmaker, but not really. How much Ink Saver Main is a deal Umbrella? I'd say about a pure is good. You can do a little more or a little less, but nothing drastic. I'd say I have at least a main and nothing more than two mains, two subs. No problem, enjoy the shoot. What are you doing right now? I'm gonna do solo. And I might talk about it a little more. My voice is getting a little shot because I've tried to talk about 
what exactly I do on these maps. So I've been talking a lot. But yeah, I was doing solo for about three hours. No private battle? Not right now. I might do viewer battles sometime in the future, but probably at a better hour than now. It's kind of late and I won't play for much longer. Yes, everyone is pumped up and we have Fizzy Bomb, Rapid, and Torpedo. That is what happens. Do not pump up. It almost never works out, but especially against AoE weapons, do not do that. I was just letting someone order shoes. Uh, am I playing competitive? This is solo, so this is ranked. But it's not team scrims, it's still just individual practice. But I'm not with a team against another team. I'm just practicing my own. See, I got shots. That was good. That splash on's gonna die. Yep. That T-Tech got a really good play. Booyah's gonna live, no one's losing on it, but at least it's still a 4 special. We are now getting- we have gone from bullying to getting bullied. Very fast. Dynamo's gonna die. We got the pop on my ball, but that's okay. So that's okay. Use MPU so you better, but you shot. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> MPU does two things, which slightly increases the radius and slightly lowers jump RNG. Currently, the optimal route is around two subs or 1.1, depending on if it's a map where you will jump a lot. So just use it because it's standard. <laughs> Dynamo will break my ball in one shot, have to be careful. So we jump pretty easily. But we're gonna have to run this back. I prefer they use right now, it's kind of wasted. is playing really movement heavy. Meaning he's not necessarily trying to kill me, but just waste my time for his team to come kill. Because you can just do a grab and have to predict. Which is actually pretty good in this case because his team is being much more receptive than mine is. That being said, if I don't die, he's not really doing anything either. And my team can kill him eventually. My goal against him is not just to kill him, but more just to avoid dying to the T-Tech. Space is 
one. Teammate followed up. There we go. This time my teammate will follow up. We have armor. I'm aggressive because I'm looking for an arrow kill. They're going to come from the spawn, so I have to back off at this point. I'll have wall, which is going to be useful. Go for a booyah, but there's going to be absolutely no follow up from it. Arrow's in zone by himself. This is a pick and a team fight one. If we didn't have a stagger here, then this would have been the team fight I already won. Don't want to see Jet. Almost dead. Have a landing camp successfully? Barely. Dynamo might kill me. I'm gonna lose zone because people are feeding. Instead of painting. So with you, nothing you do. Got a pick. Three is four, so no one's gonna shoot it. Not worth my time. I'm gonna die to it anyway. I'm just bad in English? Ah, oh, no worries, man. I'll go over a rapid pro in a second. A lot of people throw Louise that can't be followed up. Yeah. We might be able to cap here, but it's gonna be really close. I'm gonna roll Torp to try to get paint and a kill in zone. Not happening. Unfortunately, a rapid is a weapon that can't paint very well, and this is why well, this is fine in comp when you have a team that can know what they're doing. Unfortunately, it just doesn't really work right now because it's solo queue with people who don't know what they're doing. Uh, I don't think Rapid Pro is good on those stages because Rapid Pro is trouble approaching or putting any form of pressure. It's ultimately just slower without any good options. It's not a good weapon right now, honestly. Some maps it can work if you get a really good push and have a comp that can actually go in, but it's not really going to ever be an optimal or better option. Like, in the end, it is outclassed of whatever it tries to do. There is better options available, so it's not worth using. Also, if you're going to invest in Rapid, might as well just play the Rapid that's good. Instead of the Rapid that isn't. So, nobody plays it. Think it's decent on defense now nah. the problem with rapid is that if you ignore it it doesn't do anything so rapid needs to be able to approach in defense wise anyway this doesn't mean all the time but the majority of the time rapid doesn't paint very well so it doesn't really do too much and you don't have a sub that you can poke torpedo poking will harass the shit out of people and it gives rapid an approach option so it can actually move forward like as you can see i play rapid very proactively rather than reactively i'm not necessarily waiting for them to approach and react to it, but most of the time I'm initiating something or helping my team initiate something. And that is something Rapid Pro cannot do anywhere near as effectively. It's not a terrible option, it's better than people say it is, but it's not good. But I think it's very important to understand what Rapid has to do to understand how Rapid Pro Rapid is better. Rapid has to be able to go in to be able to get value as a boss. I didn't think the Nava would turn around and look at me. I thought he would focus on zone. Being said, when they collapsed on me, my team got kills, so it works out in the end. They capitalize off everyone looking at me, which works. So the last one is try to roll, did get the roll. Dude is covering, can't approach there. Expect the tracker sites. Nautilus can die because he's in a terrible position. Jet landing. Here it is. Three, two, one. Mom almost killed me. Not rushing me. Cool.
If I was greedy, I could have gone for the jet, but Ball could easily camp the landing, so there was no need for me to be risky. The kill is totally worth my special. There's one here. I want to hold him out. They're not moving. Whatever. Go here. Meteor can't do shit. Mormon Zone can't do shit. We win the game. Don't like Baller because of the bomb you can throw under? Yes. It's difficult, but you have to be able to play around it. <laughs> 